I would rather my works be remembered than me being remembered. But together with this, I would like to tell you I've got a lot of living to do, so I'm going to be around for a very long period. And uh, I, would, uh, I would like to be just known as, as a person who was interested in the arts. If I do get elevated to the position of being referred to as an artist, I would love that. But uh, if I'm remembered as a person who loves the arts, I'd be very content with that. Wherever I am, I would feel very nice about it. Jesse Winarden Governor was born in Beater Street in July 1942. He spent his childhood years growing up in Mayville. Forced to leave high school due to the extreme poor economic conditions at home, Casey began working as a bricklayer, just managing to eke out a living. These painful and anguished times were to have a profound influence and impact on Casey's work as a theater practitioner. It shaped his ethos and vision for later productions that were firmly rooted in reclaiming the voice and dignity of disenfranchised working class people. Case's introduction to the theatre world was equally traumatic. Linking up with a group of so-called educated artists, Casey's discomfort was exacerbated by their patronising attitude to a young working class man. The sad thing about this place was they were dealing with academics and were catering for academics. These were a group of people who did once a year Shakespearean stuff or Edwardian stuff or some French stuff and they did not acknowledge people who were not uh, in the academic world. I mean, you either had to be a, a lecturer, a teacher, lawyer, doctor, that kind of stuff. And one of the most painful moments for me was once when we were having a, a reading of a play and they were distributing scripts. And the person who was distributing scripts gave the person next to me, went right past me and gave it to the person one next to me, uh, one next to me, and I just sat there. And the only use they had for me was to sweep the stage, bring in props, take out props, make tea, things like that. Undeterred by such insensitivity, Casey's resolve to commit himself to theatre was further strengthened when Muthal Naidu gave him a break in a variety show called Christmas Nuts. A group of young actors that Casey was working with broke away from Data the Durban Arts Theatre Academy and began producing progressive productions based on writings of international artists. Ronnie Governor joined the group and together with Muthal and Kesi gave the company a structure and coherence. Ronnie named the group the Shah Theatre Academy. After playing many principal roles in productions like All My Sons, Beyond Calvary, Lani's Pleasure and Swarmy, Kesi became restless because he wanted to act in productions that spoke directly seriously and passionately about the plight of oppressed people in South Africa. There were lots of activities going on around us relating to the political situation in this country. And I appealed to those people that were writers at that time, write a play on what is happening to our people. Some of them said that they were, they had done their share in terms of theatre made their contributions and their sacrifices and they weren't prepared to make any further sacrifices. And they had to think about their family and things like that. But the plays never came. And I told myself, I know what I want to do on the stage, I know what I want to discuss. Let me write it myself. And because I was not familiar with the pen, meaning uh, to me, writing a script was a ponderous piece of work where you had to sit down and write word for word. I got uh, my brother, uh, Muhammad Ali, and my wife to write for me while I dictated. And that is how I wrote my first play, which was Stable Expense. I'm going inside the office. The Lani was seeing me. Are you getting so happy, man? You calling me side chicken man? Chicken man? Then you give me one drink. I'm drinking that one. I'm going to decide another one for you. Give me a drink. I'm going to decide another one for you. I'm on, on, on. Then it's 
standing by the door there. He's saying, dance, buddy, dance. How am I going to be dancing, man? Eh? I can't stand him by my leg. How am I going to be dancing? Now, Lani sing me, he sing. Now, buddy, sing you one song. And Lani asked him to sing. Now, I'm going to sing nothing. Hey, I'm telling you about this thing. There's no Lani girl. Oh, you, you must sing this girl, man. Such a pretty girl. Oh, you, you must sing her, man. Big, big, Jesus, big, big, Jesus, hang here. Legs, fat, fat, legs. Oh, you, she must sing that girl dancing, man. They're taking this girl, they're putting her top by the table. Something I'm telling by you, man. They're putting it top of the table, and then what they're doing, they're putting all the lights, everything, dark, 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 they're making. Then what they're doing, wait, I'll show you. They're putting the girl top of the table, eh? They put the girl top of the table. They put the light, everything, dark. Then they're putting the music. Oh, you, when they're putting the music, this girl starting to dance, man. This girl can dance. Oh, you, you must sing the dancing. She dancing, dancing, dancing. Now, light, everything, dark, dark. And she dancing, music is playing. She dancing, dancing. Then what she doing? Slowly, slowly, slowly. She putting her hand by the back. Why she putting her hand by the back? Oh, no, no, I'm telling you just now. She putting her hand by the back. Slowly, slowly. She taking the button out. Then what she doing? She taking the blouse and then she throwing it. This stupid fellow is catching it, man. No, this girl she not worrying about nothing. She dancing, dancing, dancing. Then what she doing? Slowly, slowly, she going like this. She going like this. What she doing? She taking a dress out, man. Then what she doing? She taking it out. And then she throwing that another one for catching it. Now what she got it? She got it the trousers. She got it, and then she got the brushes. Oh, you, you must sing, man. Big, big, Jesus, hanging, man. I'm telling by you. Then this girl dancing. She's dancing now. More, and more slowly, she dancing. She's dancing, a hand going like this, a hand going like that. Then what she doing? Hey, man, I'm telling you, this girl, very clever girl, man. Very clever girl. She's not putting her hand by the back, nothing. She's she not seeing by the back, nothing. She's putting her hand slowly, slowly by the back. What she doing? She taking the brushes out. Oh, you and she taking that one out. This fellow shouting, take it out, quickly, quickly. This girl not one. She's going more, more slowly, more, more slowly. Then she's taking the brush out. She's not throwing it. No, 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 no. She's holding it like this by the hand. And she's dancing. Dancing. She's shaking this side. She's shaking that side. Then she's shaking like that. She's leaving it. That thing coming out. She's falling dead. Me, I was standing over here. I'm catching it. Now, that's the time Lani coming by me. He's saying, all right, buddy, buddy. You sing too much things, everything. There were one half pint beer. You can take the beer and you can go in. Uh, you know, Lani doing very bad things. That's when I'm seeing everything. Lani saying, take it and go in. Take the beer and go in. No, not like that. Uh, I was, well, very beautifully surprised by the reaction of the people. And for the first time in my career as an actor, I saw people, and I mean people, I mean the elderly folk, the middle-aged folk, and the young ones, queuing up. We, we had never had the opportunity of putting on a board there saying, houseful. But now, we had to create boards, right? Crude boards saying, houseful. And the play went out into townships, villages, places where full-length plays or proper dramatic performances had never occurred. Stable expense marked a turning point in Casey Govender's theatrical career. His plays gave space to people who were marginalized, and for the first time, audiences began hearing the unique accents and language of disempowered voices. Overwhelmed by the success of Stable Expense, Casey founded the Stable Theatre Workshop in 1974. Without any funding and dipping into his own meager financial reserves, Casey and the Stable Theatre provided a cultural haven for disadvantaged artists to nurture and develop their theatrical skills. I come from an era where apartheid was at its height so what was also at its height was the pain that people suffered during that period. And that uh, combined with my knowledge of or my respect for my surroundings, my environment, uh, boded well for me. And I used these uh, experiences and uh, respect forms to enter into the uh, acting world. It was very tense and 
from my side, because again I would relate to my cultural upbringing, the respect that I had for my body said, don't go into prison. It was very easy to get into prison. The difficult task was to carry on doing what you are doing, but remain out of prison. And that was a problem that I was faced with, to stay out of prison. But on the same token, there were the principles involved in your productions, your performances, and you yourself. And a similar situation occurred when I went to open with my play, uh, The Shack, in Soweto. You want to come to Molly's Posey, I'm tuning the street. You come to Molly's Posey, you don't make your cacaracks, nothing, right? Molly, she don't like anybody making any cacaracks. You want the zoll, you want the buttons, you want a dog, you want a chicken, you want a chicken. You come here to Molly's Posey. Molly could everything. Molly's a serious day. She's a serious day. Molly had a posy that's side the river. Serious a posy. Then his vetoes came and they tell her she must chop. But I'm telling you something. You don't make no cacaracks, my Molly's posy. You want to come here, you tell me I must chop. You come here this part of the morning, you come and tell me I must chop. Yay, what do you think I am? You come in here with your dog. You want me to chop from here, you give me another posy. There were numerous occasions when uh, I would have people cast into my play. And because of uh, special branch pressure and the profession that they were pre uh, preparing themselves to get into, especially the ones that were aspiring to become teachers, would drop off in the middle of rehearsal. They would just say, sorry, I'm not taking part in the play. So it meant that you had to go and recast. And you got to cast uh, people who had the strength to perform the plays that you are writing. Because they knew that there, there was a risk of arrest. But I gave my cast the assurance at all times that if any such situation occurred, I would take the responsibility. Prior to the writing of The Shack, another play that propelled Casey Govender as one of our leading socially conscious theatre practitioners was his production of Working Class Hero. It was a searing indictment against Indian attitudes towards African people. Set against the shocking conditions of a building site, Working Class Hero was nationally acclaimed as a play that also exposed the treachery of high-minded liberals and the absurdity of job reservation. Once again, the impact was resounding as Casey's characters spoke in their uncensored and undiluted language, which cut right to the bone. Why I must like it in my head? Why I must like it in Mulungu? You tell me, why I must like it in Mulungu? You know to do it in a nice language. I tell you. That one time, that one small one, children for me. In Ghana, we are That time they're working there by the white man's house. They're working there by the my India's house. What are they doing? It? They're making it awake, 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 all the day to work. They give it a small one a man. That one, the wife, that, that seat, but see, my wife for me. That time she working there by the house for the my India, for the Mulu. What are they doing? It? They give me the food for the, for the pear punch. In a pear punch. Not to play it in the paper. They're making it easy outside there by the steppies. That one the time she wanted to go into the toilet. Where's she going to go into the toilet? She washing the toilet for the Mulu. She washing the toilet for the Maya India. Where they making it to go to the toilet? That time she wanted shitting it. She was going there by the bushes. You been telling me the India is good. The Mulungu is good for them. Ngaka, you mustn't think it. I'm a stupid. You come on anyone. You think I'm a stupid? Over the years, Kersey has remained focused in his vision to produce and act in productions that speak honestly about any injustice, cutting across ideology and race. He has become a consummate artist in combining comedy and stinging social comment. Plays such as Caboose, On the Fence, Black Skies, Underground, Injured on Duty, Alternative Action, and God Made Mosquitoes Too holds up a revealing and insightful mirror social suffering and injustice and its attended anguish, pain and smoldering dissatisfaction. Beyond his theatre work, Casey also composes and plays music, writes poetry and has featured in many television and feature films. He has given off himself selflessly without financial rewards to a number of non-governmental organisations, participating in the executive committees and conducting numerous workshops. He is well known and respected for nurturing new acting talent 
and has been awarded a number of merit awards, including being made an honorary citizen of Louisville, Kentucky, United States. In this world of word and action, Casey Govender stands out as a shining example of an artist whose works has made an invaluable contribution in shaping our consciousness regarding the plight of the downtrodden, invisible people of the world. This is his talent. This the homage to his parents. This his legacy to his wonderfully supportive wife, Jayshree, and his two children. This is his gift to the people of South Africa.